Welcome to it. It's your fresh Wednesday morning and it's winter season and all parents are in full care mode for their families at the moment um, as the winter sniffles spread like wildfire at the moment and there's been a lot going on. There really has. Now today we sit down with Dr. Fatima Kimi to discuss our family's health and wellness. Dr. Fatima, wonderful to have you this morning. Thank you for having me It's here. been a tough year. I mean, yeah. I don't often get sick, but oh, I was knocked a couple of weeks back. Um, yeah. Definitely. It was it was insane. There's a lot going around. So I want to start with this, Doctor. Um, colds and flu. Mm. Why is it so common, specifically during the colder months of the year, during winter season? Um, so there's, uh, it's quite a debatable, um, <laughs> complex, you know, topic. There isn't always a clear, um, yes, there's a direct link. Uh, but there are some studies that have shown certain, you know, um, links to the two. Um, so the one thing being is that, um, like the rhinovirus, which is the common cold. Yes, yeah, those sniffles. Yeah, so it's... it's um, some studies have shown that it does sort of tend to proliferate within the nasal cavities a lot more faster and better in colder temperatures. Um, and also it's said that, you know, with cold air, the air is a lot drier. So, the, you know, the infection can sort of go into the respiratory tract a lot more faster. Okay. So that's sort of the one of the reasons as to, you know, why the, the understanding is that, you know, the colder temperatures um, tend to make you more prone to having colds and flus. Exactly. The other thing also is like your immune system. So obviously in colder temperatures, your immune system tends to not function as optimally. And that can also affect, you know, your defense mechanism against the viruses and make you more prone to getting the infection. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your body, just because of the cold, is a little bit more under stress than that. But yeah. this brings me to our next question. And maybe this is a myth or it's a real thing. I don't know, but you can tell us. By going out into the cold, right, are we more prone to get sick? Because we've just had this little conversation off air with my mom-in-law that she is pedantic. Yeah. Don't go out in the rain, you're going to get sick. Don't go out in the cold, you're going to get sick. And this is from someone living in Europe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so is this the truth? Do, will we catch a cold simply by spending time outside in the cold? I think if you're keeping warm outside in the cold, you know, you're wearing appropriate layers of clothing and you're keeping your body temperature at, a, you know, an optimal mm. temperature, then I do think your immune system should be, you know, apt to sort of deal with any potential acquiring a virus. But like I said, there are those other factors. Uh, factors, you know, about the dry air and, you know, certain viruses maybe are more active, you know, in colder temperatures than others. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so so basically, I mean, just to understand this straight, it's not the cold that makes you not sick. Not the direct it's cold. It's the actual bug or the yeah. virus. Right. Now, now we're talking about when you are in that unfortunate position where you catch a cold or a bit of a flu bug. Yeah. It's normally associated with coughs and phlegms. Yeah. Why does it take long for these symptoms to subside? Because we all know when you get that chesty cough, yeah. it takes a couple of weeks actually to really mm. clear out. Yeah. So we do call that a post-infectious cough. Um, so once the infection has cleared, the inflammatory aspect secondary to the infection is still there. So you have the inflammation in your respiratory tract and that takes a while. Depending on the organism that you acquire, it can take about two to four to eight weeks to actually resolve mm. um, that sort of persistent ongoing cough. Um, we usually treat it with like a safe cough syrup, just basically symptomatic over-the-counter treatment, mucolytic, mm. sometimes Sometimes we give a steroid, like a prednisone, that kind of thing, if it's if it's required. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, of course, to help loosening that treatment, like you said, it's it's, it's actually vital when it be, when it crosses that certain line. You yeah. have to look at medication um, that also hopefully doesn't contain any tartrazine because that is that is something yeah. that I think people should try and avoid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do we go about keeping our immune systems healthy? We want to make sure that we're healthy. I know that we are still mm. kind of in the thick of winter. We just said, heard the temperatures this morning. It's going to be snowing in certain parts of the country. Yeah. It's very, very cold out there. Mm. What's your tips for improving and kind of just helping our immune systems cope a bit? I think probably just looking at overall um, boosting of the immune system. So there can be a lot of things, but a lot of the things we all know, you know, making sure you have a good number of hours of sleep, you know, six to eight hours for adults, good quality sleep, making sure that you have a well-balanced, nutritious diet, and that you you do have sort of natural probiotics as part of your diet, so fermented foods, or specifically for us, yogurt, you know, that's rich in cultures. Yes. And then obviously, 
obviously adequate uh, water intake as well. Um, there are immune boosters that you can look into specifically, you know, I mean, we all, you know, a lot of us have a long working hours, stressful mm. work, you know, our nutrition is not always optimal, yes, you know, yes. um, realistically speaking. So there are those immune boosters as well. And one of the things, I'm quite an advocate for the annual flu vaccine. So if you do get the vaccine, just before winter starts. Yeah. That definitely helps, you know, it equips you. So, you know, you've got, you're basically armoring your immune cells. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, obviously with that injection, you want the, your body to build up that response. Yeah. So getting it now. <laughs> A little bit too late. A little bit yeah. too late. Dr. Fatima, thank you very much. Wonderful to have you on the Pleasure. couch this thank morning. Thanks for, for sharing me. those tips. And like you rightly said, I think two things hit home. Sleep and make sure you eat right. Yeah. And I think also staying active, which is a very good yes. one. So take those into account. Lying in bed late at night watching TV is not considered a good night's sleep. <laughs> okay, so make sure that you protect your family, stay warm, stay active, and look at your diet to make sure that you boost those immune systems.